Hello, my name is Peter Knapp from the University of York and the Hull York Medical School, and I'm presenting on behalf of my co-authors um, the results of a really interesting study, um, I, I think, into patient non-attendance at urgent referral appointments for suspected cancer. And this was a mixed methods study um, that I'm going to report. So the background to this is that in 2000, 20 years ago, the government uh, made quite significant changes to the referral pathways and target setting for cancers and other forms of care and introduced something called the two-week wait um, policy, which means that if you if your, if your GP suspects that you may have cancer, you're guaranteed or you should be guaranteed to see a hospital specialist within two weeks of the GP making a referral. So it's called a two-week wait referral. And the intention of this policy was to increase speed of access to services. Um, that's because at the time there was quite significant variation across the country in the amount of time that people were going having to wait for appointments. Um, and so the, the, the policy was intended to reduce those sort of inequities, so potentially having an impact on geographical and in uh, consequence social inequalities. And so the plan was to reduce kind of rates of late diagnosis of cancer, uh, which have an impact on cancer mortality, uh, which were indicators that the UK, UK does relatively badly on. And it's, and it's governed by NICE guidance, and the guidance has changed a number of times over the years. So this has become now a really high volume a referral pathway, uh, 1.8 million referrals um, uh, most recently under two week wait. And what that means is that a GP who's on average working full time um, in a, you know, an average practice will be making about 30 or 40 of referrals of these annually. So it's not, um, while it's not really common, actually this is not a rare occurrence for a GP. And the data suggests that the conversion rate for um, these patients is about 8%. What that means is the proportion of people who are referred who go on to be diagnosed with the cancer is about 1 in 12, 1 in 13. So for most patients who are referred, the purpose is to rule out cancer. You know, it's only a small minority who will be diagnosed. And yet the, the two-week wait policy results in the diagnosis of about 51% of all cancers in the UK now. So it's a really significant and important referral pathway. And it came to light some years ago in Leeds that a small minority of patients were not attending these appointments. So they were either cancelling or postponing or just not turning up for these um, referral appointments, which was disconcerting and worrying at a local level. Concern partly about the waste of time, you know, in the hospitals and the time that's associated with a GP referral, but also the, you know, what's happened. The health outcomes of these people, what's happening to them. These people who were sufficiently concerned about their health to go and see their GP with some symptoms who are then not going on to attend the hospital appointment. And there you have the data here in 2014 to 15 in Leeds there were you know almost 26,000 of these referrals into the Leeds hospitals so a huge number uh, but 9.3 percent of patients either cancelling or postponing or not turning up. And so we got funding to undertake a mixed method study, a quantitative study to, to provide details on uh, non-attendances and cancellations, looking at predictors of those things, and then also to assess the consequences for cancer diagnosis and mortality. We, we did that based on a huge data set of just over 100,000 first-time referrals from into the Leeds hospitals from 505 uh, general practices in Leeds over a seven-year period. And then we did a qualitative study, um, trying to understand, to get some, you know, some kind of um, some colour behind the numbers, trying to understand why why it is that people weren't attending. And we did interviews with patients who hadn't attended and with GPs. So here's a picture of the quantitative. Here's our quantitative study sample, broken down into year of referral, uh, uh, sex, and age and also deprivation. So we, based on people's postcode, where they live, we classified people according to the national IMD, the deprivation index, which is in 10 groups, the deciles, and we collapsed those into five groups, uh, forming quintiles, um, because that gives us a more powerful uh, statistical analysis. Right, what have we defined then? So what predicts non-attendance? So when we put in both patient factors into 
impacts factors associated with individual patients and general practice factors factors associated with the where the practice is how many gps there are what the conversion and detection rates there are at those practices what you find is that the patient factors are more important so although there are some general practice indicators that influence non-attendance the patient factors are the most important and um, what we found is that the youngest and the oldest adults amongst the sample were least likely to attend. Men were slightly less likely to attend, uh, as were people from the most deprived quintiles. So the most deprived fifth in, in the population were the least likely to attend. And then there was a stepped um, grading of the numbers across the five uh, deprivation groups. There were some changes over time, so there have been initiatives in needs to try and re reduce non-attendance, and that does seem to have an impact on the rates of, of refer uh, rates of patient non-attendance. Distance to hospital, there was a tiny effect. So people who didn't attend lived on average 400 metres further from the hospital than those who did, but actually its contribution to the variance actually is very modest. And then there was a difference, difference by suspected skin type. So what we found was that higher rates of non-attendance amongst people with suspected um, gastrointestinal cancers, upper or lower GI, and lower rates amongst the other types. So which of these patients go on to have be diagnosed with cancer? So uh, almost 10% of those who've been referred go on to be diagnosed, um, which is similar to the national rate. And what we found is that rates of diagnosis of cancer were lower amongst non-attending patients. And we looked at diagnosis within six months of, of attendance. So it does seem that to some extent, the people who are choosing not to attend are making what might be personally the right decision. I mean, it's, it's a waste of NHS time, but they're, they're less likely to go on to be diagnosed with cancer. And then we followed these people up. So then we looked at amongst those people who've been diagnosed with cancer within six months, which of those people are alive 12 months later? And in cancer terms, that would be quite a short term mortality indicator. Which of those people are alive 12 months after their diagnosis? And what you find is that the people who initially didn't attend are less likely to be alive 12 months after diagnosis. And it's quite a significant effect. So the, even in the adjusted hazard ratio there, um, it's 1.46. So it's almost a 50% increased risk of not being alive 12 months after cancer diagnosis. We had access to small amounts of staging data, looking at the stage of cancer when people were diagnosed. And based on that, it looks like actually the most common explanation for this is people delaying the initial consultation with the GP. So it might be to do with uh, uh, uptake of treatment, adherence to treatment if cancer's being diagnosed. But actually, you know, to see what we're seeing is later stage uh, later stage cancers at diagnosis so it looks like what you're seeing is patients who are delaying their initial consultation with their chief gp then going to report their symptoms getting perhaps an answer they didn't want from the gp and then not attending the hospital appointment the qualitative interviews we did were with um, 21 GPs from across the city, uh, a wide range of experience. Three of them were current or previous clinical cancer leads. And then we also did with 24 patients who'd either cancelled or not attended their, uh, their hospital appointment. Had a wide range of ages, though mostly older people, the medium was 60, uh, many, many suspected cancer types. And actually they were from all of those five deprivation quintiles. And then we themed the responses from both groups into uh, five categories. One as possible explanations for, for what people are doing. One is what you might call system flaws. So this affected a relatively small number of people, which is um, uh, GPs and patients talking about letters that arrived late. So uh, the person's appointment letter arrived the day after their appointment. Uh, an, am an ambulance that had been booked to take them to the appointment arrived four hours later than when it had been booked so the person missed their appointment. So those affect system flaws affecting relatively small numbers of patients. And then a really a large um, uh, type of explanation around what you might call expectations. 
So something about patient circumstances and priorities. So GPs talked about patients who have really challenging circumstances, both uh, in terms of their health and economically, and in whom, you know, the potential diagnosis of a cancer might not be the most important thing that's happening in their lives. Um, then the influence of patients' beliefs, for example, their emotions and fear, both the fear of the diagnosis and the fear of the procedure they may have to go, undergo as an investigation. And then something around perceived severity, the difficulties um, of uh, uh, emphasizing the importance of the, of, the, of the situation to the patient. It also came up in doctor-patient communication. This, the GPs talking about the difficulties they have in uh, balancing the risks that are communicated. So emphasizing the importance of the patient going and also at the same time um, communicating that actually only a minority of patients will go on to be diagnosed. What we see is nationally about one in 13 patients. GPs talked about negotiating responsibility, that is um, this idea that paternal, the notion of paternalistic care has really uh, diminished and that you know, to some extent patients have to take autonomy of, um, about the decision making. And then some also some GPs talk about the referral process, the difficulties that some patients experience in choose and book and uh, one GP who makes a point of booking the appointment with the patient in the consultation room to make sure that they've got a date and a time that is suitable for them. So a number of interesting questions. So in summary, non-attendance affects a significant minority of patients. It delays outcomes and, and increases costs. Most non-attending patients are rebooked and seen after a short delay. The predictors are deprivation and certain suspected cancer types. They're the main predictors. Non-attending patients are less likely to be diagnosed, but they're more likely to die within a year if they do have cancer. And delay in the initial con consultation does seem to be a possible cause. And there seems potential here for developing interventions, perhaps to encourage earlier consultation with GPs, to reduce patient anxiety, stressing the importance of attendance and a diligent follow-up of non-attending patients. Thank you for listening and both papers have now been published and they're available here if you want to see the full text.